In numerous verses, Muhammad asserts in his Quran that his message is only confirming previous revelations, which are the Torah and the Gospels. How can the followers of Muhammad then assert that these revelations have been corrupted? As you know, we encounter with the greatest of frustrations the Muhammadan mantra that the previous revelations, the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, had been corrupted. They do so with extreme affront, but with the absolute conviction that this is the case without ever understanding or thinking about the theological and historical consequences of such an obscene and unsubstantiated set of accusations. This allegation is publicly and gleefully declared by their allegedly most learned scholars and apologists for Muhammadan Islam, such as Zakir Naik and Ahmad Didat, for example. Like every other belief system, Muhammadan Islam had its detractors from its very birth, and like every other belief system, it has its defenders. This chapter is a summary critique of some common Muhammadan defenses and the orthodoxy of those defenses with regard to the Quran. I demonstrate that in their zeal to defend their faith, Muhammadans deny important fundamental Quranic teachings. Muhammadan apologists have long been obeying the Quranic directive, Al-Nahl 16.125, to invite all to the way of the Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. With this invitation, I shall address the intellectual defenses of Muhammadan Islam. The Quran is very clear about a number of facts. I would like to point them out to you. Allah's word cannot contain error and cannot change. Allah is said to preserve the Quran in Surahs 15.9, 41.4142, and later the words of Allah are said to be unalterable. Al-An'am 6.34 There is none that can alter the words and the decrees of Allah, and none can change his words. Let us together reflect here for a moment. If the Quran is true, and if Allah is the same as the God of Israel and Jesus, then what Allah inspires cannot change, nor can it be corrupted. So we ask the obvious question. Are not the Torah and the Gospels repeatedly said to be inspired by Allah? Any Muhammadan who knows the Quran should know the answer. Al-Imran 3.3 tells us, It is he who sent down to thee, step by step, in truth, the book confirming what went before it. And he sent down Taurat, law of Moses, and the Injil, Gospel, before this, the Qur'an, as a guide to mankind, and he sent down the criterion of judgment between right and wrong. Typical of every mention of the Torah and the Gospels, there is not a word, implication or indication, therein about any textual corruption. Surahs al-Imran 3.7, 21, 23, 48, 84, 65, 93, 184, 199. Al Nisa 4.44 51 136 Al Maida 5.15 43 49 57 259 66 69 113 Al Anam 6.91 154 Yunus 10.37 etc etc all confirm rather than repudiate the Torah and the Gospels Al Maida 5.43 to 49 for example starts off with a revealing passage. But why do they come to thee for decision when they have Torah before them? There is, is the plain command of Allah, yet even after that they would turn away. وَكَيْفَ يُحَاكِمُونَكَ وَعِنْدَهُمُ التَّورَاتِ From all the above and beyond the shadow of a doubt, Muhammad believed without equivocation that the text of the Torah was divinely revealed and most certainly uncorrupted in the 7th century. The same fact is echoed in the following verses of the same surah. While verses 66 and 68, 69 make it crystal clear that the problem with the Jews was only their refusal to stand fast by the Torah, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from the Lord. Verse 15 states that they pass over the truths of Allah. The Quran commands the Jews to remedy their misunderstandings by a study of the Torah. Al-Imran 3.93 Bring ye the Torah and study it, 
if you be men of truth. Further evidence of the integrity of the text is found in Al-Nahl 16.43, Al-Anbiya 21.7, and Al-Aqaf 46.10. Say, see ye, if this teaching be from Allah and you reject it, and a witness from among the children of Israel testifies to its similarity with earlier scriptures and has believed, while ye are arrogant, how unjust you are. Truly, Allah guides not a people unjust. Where Muhammad's detractors are told, ask of those who possess the message, the Jews, as a confirmation of the Quran. These points cannot be overstressed, even at the risk of flogging them to death, because nonetheless, the followers of Muhammad will still attempt to discredit and disprove all of our references. For a Muhammadan to be in accordance with the Quran, in his belief system, he cannot maintain that the Torah and the scriptures are corrupted unless the corruption took place after the Quran was written. Muhammadans must differentiate between ignorance of the Quran or the Bible and corruption of the Quran or the Bible. Al-Imran 3.78 there is among them a section who distort the book with their tongues as they read. You would think it is a part of the book, but it is not part of the book. And they say, that is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. It is they who tell a lie against Allah, and well they know it. In his Quran, Muhammad already is accusing some of the people of the book of misrepresenting the meaning of the text of the Bible, but not of perverting it or tampering with the said text. When it comes to the Qur'an, Muhammadans are quick to point out that false teaching is not to be equated with textual corruption. A consistent interpretation of the Qur'an requires that the text used to support the textual corruption in the Bible should be treated similarly. The followers of Muhammad have an extremely unpleasant choice either way. The one fork in the road leads to historical inaccuracies between the revelations since the Qur'an asserts that they are all inspired by Allah and are incorruptible. The other fork leaves them with an equally serious dilemma as it gives them a Quran which says the word of Allah is uncorrupted. Yet, Muhammadans are belying that very revelation in their attempt to defend it. It leaves the Muhammadans with a God that cannot protect his word from interpolations and errors. Furthermore, the apologists who hold to the corruption of previous inspirations are left without a theological court of appeal when they are faced with proofs of textual corruption within the Qur'an itself, since there are such conclusions. They cannot announce that Allah's revelations are incorruptible while at the same time are defending the Qur'anic revelation by maintaining that Allah's words were allegedly corrupted regarding the Torah and Gospels. Clearly, this argument is not in accordance with the Qur'an and hence is not orthodox. Above, prove that the Hebrew Bible and the Gospels were not corrupted before or during the life of Muhammad, then the followers of Muhammad have the unenviable task of proving that these books were corrupted after the death of Muhammad. They have to show at least one single original uncorrupted Hebrew Bible and one original uncorrupted set of Gospels upon which they are accusing the Christians and the Jews of having had their books perverted. They have to reveal to the world how this Herculean task was achieved, especially since the Christian priests and the Hebrew rabbis do not agree upon their interpretations of the Messianic era or the Messiah. They have to explain how it was possible to corrupt all these books in every language on all the continents known to man at that time. They have to tell us when in historical time this was achieved and how it was possible to rewrite all of these books again in all these languages. Their worst nightmare resides in the fact that the world has available Hebrew Bibles that were written centuries before Muhammad and are exactly the same as we have them today. The followers of Muhammad, as usual, impale themselves upon the very mendacities that they concoct to disprove the originality of the Bible. They are so ignorant and oblivious to facts and reality and so deep in denial that they do not comprehend the resultant and self-evident conclusion that if the Hebrew Bible and Gospels are corrupt, then the Quran itself is automatically corrupt also, since Muhammad uses these very allegedly corrupted books 
as witnesses to the veracity of the Quran. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now await with unabated breath the counter-arguments of the Muhammadans that will enlighten us upon this subject.